So uh, first of all, I'll give you a little bit of a, a background to Thomson Reuters. Uh, most of you probably know Reuters as a, a news agency. We've been uh, providing news and the facts for about 150 years. But about two years ago, Reuters was bought by Thomson, and we're a much bigger company now. As you can see, we're a global company. We operate in around 100 countries uh, in the world. And um, you know, that brings privacy challenges, of course. Uh, and that, maybe that's some of why um, we look at it a bit different. Um, if you look at what we do as a business, um, you know, the, the elevator pitch, the, uh, the five-second elevator pitch, is we're all about signal to noise. We're all about gathering large amounts of information across all of these uh, verticals and uh, filtering that information to be most relevant for our customers, for our users. Um, I think the, uh, the interesting thing about how we gather that information is that we've got a lot of uh, professionals, a lot of people who understand these domains deeply. So we're not just aggregating the information from a machine perspective. We've got, say for instance, in the legal space, we've got a thousand lawyers. So if you actually look at our legal business, where we would be a big law firm. And we use that expertise, that uh, knowledge to manage and curate and filter and link the information in very uh, deep ways that are appropriate for that type of uh, user. So um, obviously that's uh, one half of the coin. The other half of the coin is uh, the building the context, the context by which that information is delivered. I'll get into that in more depth. I'm sorry, I've got a bit backwards now with my slides, but I'll come to it. Um, we obviously manage a lot of information. Um, I don't think the, the scale of what we manage is anything that's uh, too scary compared to uh, people like Bitly and uh, other people who are going to come and talk later. But I do think we've got some fairly unique challenges in addition to the, the sheer scale of what's uh, described on this slide. Um, you know, our real-time information, uh, something Hillary talked about, is, is a big, uh, very demanding space. Uh, the backbone for the financial services system currently handles around 700,000 updates a second. Um, and that's pretty challenging. It's, you know, in some ways, Moore's law is both our friend and our enemy. It's our friend in that we can build these systems, often proprietary these days, but we can build these systems uh, scale to these uh, astronomical rates. Um, but it's also enabling the uh, machines and the people to publish the information that makes it such a challenge in the first place. So we're heavily involved in that race, and we continue to have to scale these systems up. Um, our clients also, from a data perspective, are very focused on latency as well, and that becomes a, a big challenge as well to deliver all of this information uh, in a uh, relatively low latent way. Um, so, as I mentioned, we collect a lot of information, and then we have to deliver it in a contextual manner. And I think context is, uh, is, is where things get interesting from a, a privacy perspective and where we start to perhaps get into the meat of it. I don't want to talk too much about the data challenges. We've got some other talks going on while we're here, um, and perhaps those will be more relevant. Um, context for, for us is all about you know, understanding who the user is, where they work, where they are physically located right now, uh, the task they're doing, the job they're doing, uh, who they work with. All of this is relevant to providing a way of filtering information. And so I'm very interested in ways we can filter information better. Um, and obviously, a key part of that, a key part of that context is learning from the experience, learning from the behavior, learning from the click streams and all those kind of things uh, to inform the user interface, to make uh, choices about the information that uh, is presented. In some ways, it's kind of similar to, uh, I guess, what people call computational advertising these days, which is uh, you know, the need to deliver an ad uh, that's relevant to a user within a couple of hundred hundreds of a second. We need to do the same kind of thing for information as well. So as we start, as I was getting involved in thinking about uh, this, um, this conference, I think what's interesting is that because we don't sell um, you know, consumer-level products, we sell B2B, we have perhaps a different view about how that behavioral information can be mined. Um, and I thought that was interesting because I think if we're serious about uh, leveraging data in the way that Hillary talked about, I think we're going to have to think carefully about the kind of business models that are built around particularly behavioral data. There's no question, I think, in my mind, that uh, consumers are you know, demanding these kind of capabilities, whether it's the Amazon algorithm for shopping, or whether it's the Netflix algorithm, or whether it's a contextual ad from Foursquare. There's obviously a demand that, for the, from consumers to have this kind of capability, to have their new kind of user interfaces. And I think that's, um, that's, you know, that Pandora's box is open, right? But and I think, I think everybody's perceived wisdom is that consumers are comfortable with that trade. They're comfortable giving up information about themselves, losing some level of privacy, uh, because they're getting a better product. I think my point is that that doesn't necessarily scale into the enterprise, that 
the CIO or the uh, chief privacy officer or the chief legal officer will have a different view about the kind of information which is inevitably bleeds out through that kind of mining. Now, we have examples of uh, customers who carefully obfuscate queries to our databases because they want to hide what they're actually interested in. We've got examples of people uploading dummy portfolios to systems because they don't want us to understand their positions or the, the uh, uh, equities they're interested in. So I think that kind of example is going to get more and more per pervasive as it becomes obvious that the, the level of capability of data mining. Um, I think, you know, it's not that this is a new idea, right? Data mining has gone on for years, but I think what's remarkable is the scale and capability of the current systems. And I think we've got to be, think about what that means. Um, I think it's, it's, in some ways it's both a threat and an opportunity, and I'll come into why I think it's a threat. Um, I think one of the, two of the big changes uh, in IT and the enterprise in the last few years, one is around the radical adoption of uh, consumer-based technology. I think that's been particularly noticeable with the iPhone and the iPad. You know, five years ago I would have said that there's no way that stuff would have been adopted into merchant banks, investment banks, because the CIO would have drawn a line and said, that doesn't get to do it, it doesn't work, it's not secure. But the demand has been such that CIOs have had to adapt, and I think every CIO now looks at that problem and says, that's you know, something I need to uh, uh, solve. Um, and, you know, that's not going to change. I think the latest trend is around bring your own device, right? The idea that you can connect your own phone or your own laptop into an enterprise's systems. But you've got to understand as well that I think the CIOs are also worried about the implications of that data. Some of this is going to get solved by things like sandboxing, and I think that's currently the way people are solving those problems with iPhones, for instance. And, you know, that kind of capability will get built into the operating system. But I think for a product which is built around heavy mining of consumer level data, there are a couple of things that are going to happen. One is that the, the, the service gets banned, just, you know, the ports get locked down, the URLs get blocked in, uh, inside the, uh, the enterprise, or, or it gets degraded in some way. And I think that's bad, you know, for two reasons. One is you end up, you know, somebody moving to a mobile device uh, or their own personal device, which means you've got multiple devices. And I, I'm not even sure that's sustainable because I think compliance laws will inevitably at some point say, it doesn't matter whether it's your own device or whether it's an enterprise's device, we're going to expect that you uh, com have compliance uh, control and audit around those issues as well. It's also the loss of context, and that's probably the bigger worry for me, is that you start to get, uh, you know, the, the, the no longer get the consistency of approach and uh, the same device being used for different purposes. So I think um, if we don't do this right, if we don't uh, think about how we mine, that, mine the information carefully in the, and how we actually modify products and how we sell or aggregate or anonymize that information, then that could potentially stop the adoption of these consumer technologies in the enterprise and certainly um, you know, around the world uh, with differing uh, privacy laws starting to emerge. I think that will uh, uh, happen if we're not careful. So, so I think the... Um, I think the, 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 the key problem, and I think the thing that needs to get addressed, is the ambiguity. Um, I think a lot of the way these systems are built is implicit. And I think the way we differ about that is we are explicit about how we use information. Uh, we, we, we carefully um, articulate what we can do with the information, where we're going to store it, how we're going to manage the life cycle of that information, how we're going to aggregate it. Uh, we certainly don't sell it on. Um, but we're careful about how we do that, and it's explicit. And I think a lot of the problems that are going to happen around, are, are happening around privacy and the concerns which are being raised are the leverage of implicit contracts that are, are made with you know, the, the big uh, uh, data miners. And I think as you start to design products that leverage information in the way that uh, you can, I think you need to be careful and make sure that you're explicit about how you use that information. So, as I said, Reuters has been, uh, Thomson Reuters has been doing this for a long time, and I think that's, that's how we've uh, got to the, the point where we're um, delivering into these kind of environments, these uh, heavily uh, legislated environments. I think that um, there's an interesting way of looking at this problem, which is that rather than look at it as a, a compliance problem or a cost avoidance problem, you can actually look at it as, a, as a, an opportunity, an opportunity to uh, uh, do the right thing and build a strong relationship with your customers, and that's certainly how we've done it in the past. I think um, you know, we've always managed um, the trust principles around journalism as, as a key part of the way the company is run. So when we think about product design, we think about what it means to be a trusted provider of news, and we're very careful about managing. Uh, we have had the odd glitch with things like pictures, but we are very careful about how we do that. And I think that you can think about privacy in the same way, and it can be an asset for shareholders just like uh, 
just like uh, other assets. Um, so, uh, just to finish off, I, um, I think it, I didn't want this to be a, a downer talk. I think it, the idea is that there's a real opportunity here if we do the right thing to leverage behavioral information, to leverage behavioral data, to build better products, and to get that into the enterprise in the way that we've done uh, in, uh, in our products today. Thanks.